Welcome back. And with me, Ron Throgmorton, the CEO of Diego Payaser. Good morning. Welcome. Great to see you. We're going to talk you. about what is one of the most fascinating industries going on right now, and that is the cannabis industry. Uh, first, let's start with, give me a backup of Diego Payaser. What is it you do in the industry? Sure. Let's start there. Uh, it, you're correct. It's really exciting. It's a great time to be in the cannabis industry. Uh, Diego Payaser started back in 2012, 2013. Uh, went public in 2014. Uh, I came on board uh, uh, right before we went public. So I'm the CEO and have been the CEO for five years. Uh, when we first started in this industry back in 2012, 13, we were really pioneers. Uh, uh, there weren't a lot of mainstream companies that were yeah. willing to that take that chance. even before like Washington and Colorado, right? Well, it was, it or right about right the same time? At the same time. Okay. And so when, when we started out, like I said, we were pioneers. Uh, mm -hmm. Since then, the market has really matured. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a good thing. I, I don't look at that in, in a bad way at all. Uh, the competition has become better. Uh, there are bigger companies uh, doing better things. Now, there are a lot of different cannabis companies. Some just have paraphernalia, some, you know, provide CBD. Where do you fall in the whole cannabis spectrum? Sure. Our initial model was more real estate based okay. uh, just because of the uncertainty. Um, uh, what we like to refer to in the industry is we didn't touch the plant. So mm -hmm. we would go in, we would secure the real estate, we'd provide the build out, uh, 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 the executive management skills that some of these smaller operators um, uh, didn't have and give them a brand because the brand was very important, at least in our, in our eyes back then, it proved to be correct today. Uh, but as the markets evolved, so have we. And now you have uh, publicly traded companies that are starting to touch the plant, as we refer to it. And we are doing the same. We're evolving that direction. We just launched in the summer uh, DA, a wholly owned subsidiary, Diego Payser Management Company. That management company will directly manage and currently manages a retail operations. The next step in the states where it's allowed, we will actually own the marijuana stores. Now, when you say touch the plant, does that mean actually grow it or what? Grow it, it and, and sell it. Really what it means uh, when we say touch the plant, it's where you make your profit. So our initial model, we, our profit was in the real estate and the build out and uh, the management fees and the licensing fees, but we didn't directly profit from the sale of marijuana. We were afraid to cross that barrier with it being federally illegal. But now that public companies are directly profiting from the sale of marijuana, which we refer to as touching the plant, uh, so are we going to evolve that direction. Okay. I feel like 2018 was a pivotal year for this industry. Uh, we had more states pass legalization. Uh, California started in 2018. The Farm Bill has a legalization of hemp. Um, there's just seems like there's such a difference in one year. I mean, do you agree with that? I do. Okay. I, uh, 2018 has been a great year for cannabis and uh, what an exciting time to be in the hip industry. Uh, we looked at the hip industry years ago and I thought it was real fascinating, but it was still shackled by the federal government too. And even though it's a cousin plant to the marijuana plant, still part of the marijuana family, uh, it doesn't have the THC component. Uh, so, but because it, it was associated with the marijuana tree of plants, the DEA had uh, uh, classified it the same as marijuana. So as you saw states pop up and they started to, to cultivate hemp, there's many uses for hemp, but for anything from clothing, paper, to biodiesel. Uh, but the problem was you couldn't get the investment to truly utilize the hemp. But what I mean by that is the processing. Okay. The processing of the hemp was the difficult part, not the growing. And the, the cost of, of uh, processing hemp or building a processing center is very expensive. And getting that capital in a non-traditional way is difficult. So now that they've unshackled the hemp industry, now you'll see that money start to flood into uh, uh, the hemp industry. And that farm bill is, is amazing for Mitch them. Mitch McConnell, I mean, just really pushed that for Kentucky. Uh, but we're going to see, you know, benefit nationwide on just that. just one fail swoop. I it's mean, amazing. It, it's <laughs> I, I hope to see that happen someday with marijuana. What a, what a great thing that would be. But uh, for the hemp industry, I think it's important. I think it supports and will further push the the cause for marijuana to be legal. And you now have, I think it's 63 percent of the of the country okay. uh, supports legalization of, of marijuana. So we're moving that direction. So we've also got Altria uh, making a big investment in Kronos recently. Um, who, Anheuser-Busch? That's correct. Uh, was it Tilray? Yep. Try to remember all the deals. So you've got some big brands out there that see marijuana as an important part of their future. They do. And what's frustrating is uh, the U.S. has fallen behind. And, and if you look at the top 10 marijuana companies in the world, 
nine out of the ten of them are, are Canadian uh, uh, based. Oh, yeah, they're really far ahead. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, only, the only one that's not is GW Pharmaceuticals, which is, is in the UK. It shouldn't be that way. Uh, uh, we really need to, to move this legalization forward so we don't get so far behind. So going uh, ahead to 2019, what are some things on your radar that you'll be watching in this industry? Well, I, I, the, the industry right now is moving heavily towards branding. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I'm glad it is because that's what we really support. So more of a business side rather than absolutely. a legislative side you think will be the big? Uh, absolutely. I, I think it's going to continue to be a homegrown type push. And, and I think states will kind of rally behind the demand. You have, uh, you have Illinois, uh, New Jersey, Connecticut, all had um, uh, Democratic governors, marijuana friendly. I see them prop, uh, all passing legalization for recreational marijuana in 19. Thank you very much, Ron, for joining us. My pleasure. Fascinating to watch all of this unfold over the past five years or so. Thank you for having me. Yes, and thank you as well. We'll be right back.